Hello, Tar Heel Nation. Welcome back to another episode of UNC Hoops Talk. I'm your host, Dan DeWitt, as I come to you every week uh, during the season, and we're getting close to that time. Uh, we're getting ramped up. We uh, had late night with Roy. We talked about that in the last podcast a little bit with uh, Blake from Keeping It Heel. If you didn't check out that recruiting podcast, uh, go do it. Definitely worth the time. Uh, lots of good information. And uh, yeah, keeps ramping up. More recruiting news coming out. Um, we talked about the Caleb Love commitment. Now we're Cade Cunningham is being predicted to Kentucky, even though his brother's at Oklahoma State. We'll see how that turns out. It sounds like we're kind of sliding down that one, but uh, yeah, a couple of the guys were pretty high on, so it should be still some exciting time left before next year as far as recruiting goes. we got the big annual uh, predictions podcast this week. We're going to jump pretty much right in there. That's pretty much all we got here. Um, I'll start with my prediction, uh, but before I do, I, I, if you've been a longtime listener of the podcast, you know I used to go through every game and kind of give what I thought would do. I'm not going to do that. We don't have time for that. Uh, because of all you guys that uh, sent in your uh, predictions. And so we haven't done that for a couple of years, at least maybe a few years. Uh, but I do want to go through a few things on the schedule uh, before we get into it. And the um, first thing is we do have a secret scrimmage, quote unquote, secret scrimmage with uh, Villanova set up again. I believe that's next week, in the, like October 26th, somewhere in that range. Um, so, you know, that'll be good for us, uh, obviously to see somebody else and see a high level somebody, uh, we do have an exhibition game with Winston Salem state, uh, November 1st, uh, and that'll be kind of our first chance to see them. At least if you get ACC network extra, which is uh, streaming on the ESPN app, if you're able to get it, of course, with this, I'm not yet, uh, but hopefully that'll be fixed. We'll get to see the guys there, maybe not in great competition, but at least you get to see them go live. Uh, and then we open up this year with an ACC game against Notre Dame. It's been talked about quite a bit, uh, but it's, it is at home. It's at Chapel Hill, so that's good. Uh, people have asked me why they're doing this. It's kind of to start off the ACC network. Uh, of course, with the ACC going to 20 games, they got to find room for a couple extra games, uh, which then comes before the new year. Um, and so we have Notre Dame and then ACC network wanted to kind of start off with some good games. And so... This is one of them. We, we do get them at home. That's good. Um, one of my questions from our team is chemistry. I think we have the talent. I'm really starting to buy into this team. I'm really getting excited. I think we got uh, the talent to uh, and, and kind of the fit of guys to do a lot of damage and, and to go quite far. Uh, but it, my one question is kind of chemistry with so many new guys. How does that work early in the season? And so starting with Notre Dame, who has all five starters coming back, they weren't very good last year. I think they finished actually dead last in the ACC, but all, a lot of that was injuries. Uh, so they're getting guys back from injury. They're getting all five starters back, um, kind of, you know, more experienced team. Uh, how do we respond? A good thing is it is in Chapel Hill. So, uh, you know, that with other things mixed in with our schedule has me a little bit worried. Uh, but anyway, I will jump into my prediction. Uh, so in the past, I've given myself a little bit of leeway game here or there, kind of say this or that. I didn't do that this year. I straight went with a 25-6 and six regular season record. Uh, I don't think I really broke it down, and it was a little bit harder because I didn't pick exactly what games we'd lose. And with uh, conference games now being mixed in with non-conference games before, crit or before the new year, I didn't really go, this is what we'd be in the, in the conference, this is non-conference. Uh, because I do think that Notre Dame one could trip us up right away early. Uh, we play Ohio State in Las Vegas. No, that's the Big Ten Challenge one. Uh, we play that one in Chapel Hill on December 4th, which is a Wednesday. That Saturday, we turn around and go to Virginia. That's the other ACC game that's before the new year. Uh, obviously, at Virginia is not going to be easy. They lost a lot, but they're still going to be really good. Um, you know, so I think either we could be looking ahead to Virginia, paying too much attention to them being conference game. I think Roy w would do that a little bit. Um, or also, you know, coming up Ohio state, if we play really well, we get tripped up at Virginia. Um, of course, you know, who we play in the, uh, Bahamas for the, uh, what is it? Battle for Atlantis that, you know, who we see. So we play Alabama. And we play Iowa State or Michigan. I know the last one, I don't know all the teams we have a possibility, but I know Gonzaga is in there. So kind of who we play there uh, could play 
into you know what it is. So anyway, my regular season, 25 and 6. I said we would be in the top two. I didn't say we'd necessarily for sure win the ACC regular season, but I think if we don't win it, we're going to be second. Um, I said we'd go 2 and 1 in the ACC tournament, so pretty much saying we get the double bye, get into the championship game, and lose it. Uh, I think we go three and one in the NCAA tournament, which is, again, I say this every year, but it's predicting us to get to the Elite Eight, losing in the Elite Eight. Um, but I do think if I had to go one way or the other, if I think we'll lose early as opposed to making the Final Four, I think I'm leaning more towards making it to the Final Four. If I like couldn't pick the Elite Eight, I think I would pick more that we're leaning towards making the Final Four as opposed to le- losing early. Of course, obviously, that can change. Um, you know, throughout the season, we, we, we go up and down with the roller coaster of the season. But uh, so that gives my prediction, my overall prediction as us going 30 and eight on the season. Um, so that is mine. And we were going to jump into yours. I do want to preface this, of course, uh, and I wrote it in the description too. Obviously, as Tar Heel fans, we're all cheering for uh, the Tar Heels to win it all, to win every game, to, you know, to go 40, you know, or whatever it would end up being if, it, if we did win all our games, you know, we want us to win the championship. Uh, of course we're cheering for that, but by predicting that not to happen, doesn't mean we're less of a fan. It doesn't mean we're going to cheer like, Oh, I predicted this. I'm going to only cheer for us to get to the elite eight or the sweet 16, as opposed to getting to the final four. We know that we're all going to cheer for them to win it all. So um, don't harp on guys for that. But it, that being said, I also did include, people's Twitter handle or Instagram handle. If uh, you do want to go follow some other Tar Heel fans, fans of the podcast, uh, maybe talk about predictions with people like that. Uh, I did throw that in there. One other thing, uh, talking about the schedule here, you know, I mentioned the battle for Atlantis. We got Ohio state followed by at Virginia. Uh, We do go to Gonzaga uh, December 18th. So that's, you know, probably finals week. Uh, Maybe, uh, maybe it's even after finals week. I know somewhere in there, um, could be during finals week. We go to Gonzaga and we followed up on the Saturday. We play UCLA in Las Vegas. Um, so, you know, that's going to be tricky. And then the rest of our, besides, you know, like what I talked about, uh, you know, the Gonzaga battle for Atlantis, Ohio State, uh, Gonzaga, the rest of the non-conference, we should win. Again, not that we can't trip up. We've seen that before, uh, especially with so many new guys. But a lot of those teams uh, we shouldn't have a problem with. Uh, with the talent that we have. And then starting off the ACC as well, we go Georgia Tech, Pittsburgh, Clemson, all at home to start uh, January off. We shouldn't have a problem. Then we're at Pittsburgh. You know, shouldn't be a problem. At Virginia Tech, I think we should be okay. Uh, Then, you know, we go Miami and NC State. uh, But the thing here is we go Saturday, Monday. We play Miami on a Saturday, one day off. Monday, we're at NC State. So the travel shouldn't be an issue there going to Raleigh. But just the quick turnaround and the rivalry game, you know, we could get tripped up. Then we follow that up with, you know, Boston College at home, okay, on a Saturday. Right away again, Monday, we're at Florida State. So now we're traveling down to Florida. We, we know the issues we've had playing in Tallahassee. Uh, Florida State can give us some issues. So, again, it's that, you know, two, di- two games in three days kind of thing there. Um, and then that's followed up with Duke. Uh, and obviously we know ACC schedules are going to be brutal anyway. But then two weeks later, we, we play Virginia at home on a Saturday. Following Monday, we're at Notre Dame. Again, experienced Notre Dame game, Notre Dame team. Uh, so, again, the Saturday, Monday, that's three of them right there uh, that we have. Uh, and then we follow that up with at Louisville, who's going to be really good this year. Um, a lot of people picking them to win the ACC. And of course, we, we know we have two Duke games in there. Uh, we actually played Duke on senior night, or as they call it, freshman night uh, over in Durham uh, to end our season. But, uh, yeah, it, it – tricky not that we ever have an easy ACC schedule but definitely a tricky one here this year but uh, that being said let's jump into your predictions these are the ones I've gotten if you want to send yours in obviously it won't make it on the podcast but we'll keep it and look at it for after the season to see who is accurate of course send that to me before the season starts Um, but Jared Varner uh, at v or sorry at j varner underscore wv um Longtime listener here. It said 24 and five in the regular season, second in the ACC, win the ACC tournament, get a one seed in March, make it to the final four. Um, at Thomas Crown 97, uh, I didn't write his name. I'm assuming it's Thomas Crown there. I don't know why I didn't write it there, but said we'd go 14 and six in the conference, 23 and eight overall. ACC tournament probably to the semifinals. 
NCAA, I really don't think we know enough about this team to make an educated guess, but based off of the nature of the tournament, I'll say at least a Sweet 16. Um, Chandler Collins, another longtime listener, at Chan Collins, at C-H-A-N, Collins40 on Twitter, uh, said we'd go 22-9, and nine, make the Sweet 16, split with Duke in the regular season, and beat them in the ACC tourney. Uh, so go 2-1 and one against Duke. That's, you know, a good year. Shaked Bartel, hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, on Twitter, he's at Sports Guy, sorry, Sport Guy Show. Uh, on Twitter, 25 and 6 in the regular season, first in the ACC, Final Four, and cutting down the Nets. Uh, of course, we hope you're right. Alex Gilmore uh, on Twitter, it's at A underscore Gilmore 88. Uh, said we go 29 and 7. Uh, 16 and four in the conference, losing the semis of the ACC tournament and um, losing the lead eight. Uh, so pretty similar to mine there. Jeff G on Twitter is at Steel Heel 40, uh, S T E L H E E L 40. Said we'd go 25 and six in the regular season and make a final four run. Uh, William B-, B. Clark the third at William B. Clark three on Twitter said we'd win the ACC regular season. Maybe the tournament. Uh, he said, big men are the key. Cole will be fun to watch. Uh, he says, we're going to go the distance and win it all. Michael Quick, uh, his Twitter handle is at BigPunisher78. Said we'd go 30 and 10, win the ACC regular season, make a final four in Atlanta. Uh, at Heels Yes on Twitter, said we'd go 23 and 8. Uh, six to seven of those losses would come in conference play. He said we get a three seed in the tournament and lose in the Elite Eight. Uh, Megan Arrington, a friend of the podcast, she's been on a few times. Uh, not for a while, though. So, Megan, we need to get you back on the podcast here soon. Uh, at M Arrington12 on Twitter uh, said we go 24 and 7 regular se- in the regular season, uh, make it to the semis of the ACC tournament and the Sweet 16. Uh, Lori Blair Mercer uh, on Twitter is at Carolina Chick23. Said we lose five regular season games, make it to the final four. Mark Krings on Twitter is at krings underscore 23. Said we go 24 and seven, losing the ACC championship game, make the lead eight. Again, very similar to mine. Not that that's why he picked it. He didn't know mine before. Nobody nobody knew mine before they picked these. Uh, I did know some of these before I went through it, but um, had no bearing on what I picked, I promise. Uh, at Go Heels. Uh, sorry, on Twitter, it's at Go Heels Athletics. Uh, so we'd go 32 and 8 with a new national championship banner. Uh, Andrew Braun on Twitter is at DrewFitAT. Uh, said we would go, let's see, I think the Heels will win 25 ga- games, win the ACC, and make a final four. Stephen Lyon uh, on Twitter is at S Lyon, that's L Y O N, uh, 28. Said we'd go 22 and 9. Nine and two in the non-conference, thirteen and seven in conference for third place, uh, ACC tournament quarterfinals. Wow! So he's having to lose the first game in the ACC. Come on, Stephen, uh, and make the Sweet Sixteen. Uh, Brad Keitzer. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. Uh, it's at Brad Keitzer twenty two, and that's K E U T Z E R. Uh, and all these Twitter handles, all the predictions will go in the description of this uh, video. If you do want to follow somebody, you should be able to find their Twitter Twitter handle down there, as well as uh, refresh your memory on their predictions uh, if, if I'm going too fast, which I am trying to go kind of fast here to go through it. But um, Brad Keitzer, 22, on Twitter says, uh, we'll go 25 and 6 in the regular season, be regular season champs, lose to Louisville in the ACC championship game, go to the Final Four, Cole Anthony will be Wooden Award winner, El Padilla Allen. Another friend of the podcast, been a long-time listener, uh, at They Call Me L, E-L, at the end there. Um, 23 and 8, lose the second round of the ACC tournament and go to the Sweet 16. Trey Stent- Stenton, uh, and on Twitter, it's at Triga underscore Trey. That's T-R-I-G-G-A-A underscore T-R-E. Said we'd go 30 and 8, make the final four, uh, be ACC regular season champs. Uh, Snake on Twitter, it's at Elijah underscore Shriner, S-H-R-I-N-E-R. Said we'd go 28 and 9, make the Elite 8. Uh, Jackie Eason on Twitter, uh, it's at J-E-A-S-R-Y-U-U. Said we'd go 27 and 4. Uh, and said, I think we will go to the championship. Uh, Elena, 
or sorry, Elaine Brewer Floyd on Twitter is at Elaine Floyd said uh, her predictions are 31 regular season games uh, open with a loss to Notre Dame and then an overall record of 23 and eight. I think we make the ACC tournament finals, but lose NCAA tournament. We make the final four, but lose there. Uh, John B, a big time supporter of the podcast uh, and longtime listener, um, probably the, one of the OGs uh, on Twitter. He's at N2UNC. Uh, said we'd go 27 and nine, majority of the losses before January, and go to the Sweet 16. And the last one from Twitter is Alex German. Uh, on Twitter, it's at underscore German 53 underscore. Uh, so he said, I, I think college basketball is going to be Kansas and Michigan State than everyone else. So there's a strong chance Carolina can make a Final Four run. I don't think Cole is going to disappoint, and I think Leakey is going to have a breakout year. He said, maybe some bias because he's my favorite one on the team. Uh, he said, I think Playtech is going to play a huge role on both sides of the ball. Uh, and said, so we go 27 and four in the regular season. So that's the Twitter ones now on Instagram, uh, at Heels Report. Uh, very good uh, UNC page on Instagram. Go give him a follow if you're on Instagram. Uh, and he actually gave quite a <clears throat> prediction here too. So I'm going to kind of read this out. It says, uh, here's my prediction for the 1920 basketball season. I believe UNC starts the season out with a conference win versus Notre Dame. I think UNC will go 10-1 and one in the non-conference play with a loss in the championship game versus Gonzaga in the battle for Atlantis. I do believe UNC gets Gonzaga back on December 18th with a road win in Spokane. Uh, I 100% my next prediction because I believe this team has the potential to do it. I believe UNC goes 19-1 and one in the ACC. And he even says, yes, 19-1. and one. That would be awesome. Obviously, that's winning the ACC <clears throat> and getting us a one seed in the tournament for sure. Uh, he says it's not going to be against a tough team. Like, he's talking about the loss here. It's not going to be against a tough team like Duke, Virginia, or Louisville. I believe we will have a good – sorry, we will have a road loss against Florida State on February 3rd. Um, that would be pretty awesome if we beat Virginia twice. I think we only play Louisville once, but beat Duke twice. Um, I'd take that. Uh, he says, I believe UNC loses in the ACC championship to Duke, but then we will go on to win the national championship in Atlanta first versus Michigan State. Uh, Cole Anthony wins the national player of the year and final four most outstanding player. Uh, so that puts his overall record at 37 and three. Uh, we would be regular season uh, ACC champs. We'd be ACC tourney runner up, make a final four and the national champions. Uh, of course, we'd take that. That's That'd be an awesome year. Um, and then at Tar Heel Kerwin on Instagram says we'll go 34 and four all the way to Atlanta. So I guess he's saying just a final four, not the championship, but uh, still a very good year. Grant Carey on Instagram is at GCC19. So we go 24 and seven, second in the ACC, ACC tournament champs, get a two seed and make the final four. Uh, and that is all I got. So again, if you want yours added, you can send yours in. And I'll still include it so that we can look at the end of the season. That's what's so good about this. We got it on video now. I got it in print. It'll be in the description of this video. Um, it is in writing, whatever you predict. And we can go back and and look at what we have done or, you know, what we said and kind of who was right, who was wrong in certain places. So that's always fun to do after the season. Uh, so send yours in. It's not too late. Um, yeah. And uh, I got a few comments here as we're as we're live here on on YouTube. Uh, if you don't follow YouTube, uh, definitely go subscribe. I could use more subscribers there, um, but I do appreciate wherever you're listening. Of course, that's what we want is wherever it's easiest for you. But I'm going to try something new here. Uh, since YouTube changed up the streaming, I'm, I'm on StreamYard, which sends it to YouTube, and you know whatever you don't need to know about that, but, or don't want to know about that probably, um, but trying something new here for the video for the people watching uh, i'm going to see if i can get these comments that carl here another person that's followed the, the podcast for quite some time and comments quite a bit when i'm alive so appreciate that carl uh, but carl says uh, so many quality new guys i've lost track we are loaded championship season ahead uh, we definitely hope you are right carl uh, carl also says my main concern is the health of cole anthony we are kind of thin at point guard but i think that if given a chance, KJ will be a valuable backup. Uh, yeah, we are we are definitely thin at at top guys, but we do have Leaky that can play the point guard. We have, like you said, KJ. 
Uh, Jeremiah Francis, if he can get healthy, of course, he's not playing yet. And to me, that's the biggest thing for this team is we got to get guys healthy. Uh, and a lot of people have talked about our depth. Uh, and actually, Carl has one more comment here. He says, we have so much depth, not sure who's going to start. Uh, and that's definitely a good question about who's going to start. But yeah, people have talked about our depth, but that means we got to get people healthy to have that depth. Right now, um, Sterling Manley is not practicing Jeremiah Francis and also Anthony Grant. Three guys, that, I mean, Sterling Manley is one we definitely could use in the post, but three guys that maybe aren't going to have a huge impact. But, um, you know, like we said, if we want that depth, those are guys that need to get healthy uh, to be able to help us and can contribute and also get ready for next year because we, we're going to lose the two grad transfers Probably going to lose Cole Anthony. We lose B Rob. Um, now Shea Rush is a senior, but he won't get much playing time. I'm trying to think of, I mean, but B- Bacot, if he has a really good season, or even Garrison Brooks, if he has a really good season, could end up going pro um, and, and could leave us. We got some nice pieces coming in next year, but we also like to have that experience. So getting Jeremiah Francis some experience, Anthony Grant, uh, making sure Playtech gets some experience, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, obviously, Leaky Black. Um, is going to be what gives us our depth. So we need that to happen uh, for us to get that. But uh, yeah, that's really all I got for the predictions podcast. If you're still listening to this, please, you know, if it's on YouTube, give me a like, leave a comment, you know, uh, that you made it to the end. Um, also, you can answer the question since it was posed here. We don't know, know who's going to start. We'll, well, I'm going to hopefully do a player's prediction podcast next and still before the season starts. Uh, probably early November uh, before that first game, but kind of what I can, what I expect uh, or maybe what we need from each guy. And then also who is going to start? Cause that is a big question. So leave in the, des- leave a comment in the description, who you think the starters are going to be or who you want them to be. Maybe, um, maybe make that preference. And if you're listening to this, go to Instagram, go to Twitter uh, for both of my, it's at all Tar Heel Dan. Um, and whether you want it to be public or in in private message, uh, let me know who your starters are going to be and also that you made it to the end of the podcast. I'd love to hear that from you um, and appreciate you guys listening, supporting the podcast and, um, and just helping me unite Tar Heel Nation. That's kind of my mission with this podcast, unite Tar Heel Nation. So uh, that is all I got here this week. Uh, until I see you guys very soon, go Heels. <laughs>